Hello, hello. So I am back from my run and I have dropped my babies off at school and I'm all by myself and I've taken a moment just to like breathe in the solitude and the quietness and it is beautiful. Um, so this morning was super busy, super crazy. I chopped up a gigantic gigantic amount of watermelon um one of the watermelons i bought yesterday was totally off and terrible and just squidgy inside and i nearly cried about that but then luckily the second one was actually decent so i am going to be starting my day oh my god let's see if i can even ah watermelon down mm. floor fluff never hurt anyone so this is definitely not the best watermelon in the world however it's still a lovely watermelon and uh, I'm still going to enjoy it. However, I was thinking, I want to go on holiday somewhere where the fruit is incredible. Where the fruit just like has so much flavour and so much like amazingness. And I want fruit that I've never tried before. So I'm thinking next year I might go on holiday to a super exotic place where I can just have a fruit party. My kids would love it. I would love it. I don't know how James would feel, but he could be along for the ride. Anyway, I'm thinking fruit party. If you guys know where the best place in the world is for the most delicious fruit, let me know. Let me know, because I want to be there. I'm feeling very fruity at the moment. Um, anyway, I'm going to dive into loads of work that I've got to do, what I'm excited to do, that I really want to do. And while I do that, I'm going to snack on this massive amount of watermelon. I'm curious to see how much watermelon I get through. I am actually very hungry this morning because my workout was vicious. Vicious, 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 and I'm absolutely knackered. Um, I've now been doing my Heather Robertson for two whole weeks, which I feel super proud about. Just finished day 14. Um, and obviously I've also been running alongside that and I'm feeling amazing. And I can't believe it's only been two weeks. I feel like I must've been doing it for months and months and months, but I'm very excited to see where I go. And um, yeah, super loving it. But I wanna, I wanna share with you guys the two crazy things that I made yesterday. Sorry, I've got loads of things on, the washing machine and um, dishwasher and stuff. But do you remember that mung bean stuff I had yesterday? Well, it's turned into something crazy. It's like, can you see that? It's like super fluffed up. I'm gonna give it a little mix. Ooh, it smells fermenty. Look at that, oh my gosh, holy muffins, it's like cheese. It's turned into like a cheese, wow. Well, I'm gonna give this a mix and I'm going to attempt to make something out of it and hopefully it won't be absolutely vile. Um, so that is going to be my, uh, maybe my lunch plans. And I've got some leftover Ethiopian that I could use. But yes, that is like, oh wow, that's, oh, if you guys could smell this. Oh, you know what? It does have a good, it does have a good fermenty smell. I'm very curious. And also I didn't turn any, my mochi into anything yesterday. So I've got a big ball of blobbly rice that I need to turn it into something, um, basically. But we're gonna, we're gonna work on that later. Um, and for now, let's go and stuff our faces with some watermelon. Water and something fresh is how I like to work. I am not happy in the slightest. It turns out that watermelon is not very nice and therefore I cannot continue to eat it. Very, very sad. But I am still hungry and I do want some fresh things. So I pulled a few things out. I've got sugar snap peas. I've got some cotton candy grapes, which I'm very excited about. And that was a lovely little apple. So I'm gonna slice all this up and put it on a nice little plate for myself. Okay, so this is my new fresh munchy platter. I do feel so sad about the watermelon and I'm gonna see if I can do something to it, maybe blend it up or juice it or I'm not quite sure. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go and enjoy this. I'm still working. I'm nearly finished. I'm gonna take a little break in a second, but I am still hungry. So I'm just having a quick banana snack. It's nearly 11 o'clock. And then I'm gonna rush into the kitchen and make some very exciting breakfast. So I have finished a little bit of work. I need to go and pick up Romy in like 15, 20 minutes, but I thought I would get a head start on some food first. And I started without you guys and I apologize. I'm filming it over for Instagram and such is life. Um, but I will talk you through it real quick. Basically my thought process is I really fancied some porridge. Now I've been liking porridge, but I've been liking it extra watery recently. But the problem with super watery porridge is it's not super, super tasty. Now, I guess that's the point of low calorie density stuff, but that's because I was thinking about sweet porridge and you need loads of more sweetness to counteract the wateriness. But now I'm thinking, 
What about savoury porridge? I could really load up on the water of a nice savoury porridge because it would be super tasty and I haven't had to add any like maple syrup or crazy stuff. I just add a little bit of um, soy sauce or some veggie uh, stock or something like that and I could have a really water, extra water rich uh, savoury porridge. That's my point. Um, so therefore I'm making some savoury porridge. I currently have an onion and a piece of frozen garlic and a piece of frozen ginger in here just sauteing down nicely and my thought process is um, I've got a cup of oats now these are non-conventional oats now my mum gave me bags of loads of different kinds of oats uh, no not oats my mum gave me bags of loads of different kinds of flakes she didn't label them so I don't know what this one is but it's not oats kind of looks like oats though it might be barley or something else I'm not really sure so anyway I've got an unidentified flake right here um and I'm going to be going in with loads and loads of mushrooms, which I've just sliced up. And I'm going to put some spinach in at the end. I wish I had some miso for a lovely miso-y flavour. But I'm going to do some soy sauce and some veggie broth and stuff. So that's going to hopefully be a really exciting, yummy, um, savoury and extra low calorie density porridge. Um, but whilst I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm quickly going to whip this up as wraps and see what the heck I have created. Because I don't know, is it going to be amazing or is it going to be absolute rubbish? Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to whack it on medium high. Let's get that cooking and then let's see what happens. Let's do this together, shall we, guys? So I'm doing about half a cup at a time, spreading it out. There we go. Oh, it's starting to form bubbles because of the fermentedness. Oh my gosh, I'm a bit excited. I have done this one already um, but I flipped it over and this side's now gone a little crispy and I don't want this side to be crispy but it looks pretty cool it looks pretty cool I might just have a little taste now a because I want to try it and b because I'm hungry oh 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 that's special that is special. Oh my gosh. I think I've just created a high protein cheat version of injera. And my mind is blown. Oh my muffins. Woo! Right, well, I'm excited. I'm a little bit excited. Okay, I'm gonna have to eat this wrap because I'm hungry and because um, it's darn delicious. Mm, it's fluffy. It's a very different taste and texture to when it's not fermented. Look at the bubbly goodness. Okay, let's go. Back from nursery and I've got my little roms, which is always nice. But I am so, so, so hungry because I really haven't eaten much. Yes, Rams? You want me to come with you? I think she's trying to take me somewhere. What do you want to do, Ram Ram? Do you want to do some drawing? Oh, sweet Pete, that is so beautiful. Let's do some drawing then, shall we? Oh, Rami, you show Mummy your lovely drawing. Yay, Ram Ram! Now, while Rami is doing some beautiful drawing, I'm gonna explain, because I'm hungry. I'm so, so hungry. So, um, in here, I have put uh, my mushrooms, and I let those saute down. I did a full box of mushrooms, and I also did a splash of soy sauce, um, and then added loads of water and a bit of bouillon as well. Um, and I let that cook for a little while. Then I've just added in my oats now. And I'm curious to see what this kind of oat is like. I'm hoping it fluffs up like a normal oat. But we will have to wait and see. Sorry, it's not oats. It's not oats. It's flakes. I don't know what flakes it is. Anyway, so now I'm hoping to um, let this turn into something magical and delicious and fluffy. So let's see. Meanwhile, I'm also going to be finishing off the rest of my wraps. Because this one I didn't flip over. And this is as soft as, uh, as, as something really soft. Okay, I have made my savory porridge and this is what i have got this is so darn flavorful mm. garlic ginger onion soy sauce bouillon combination is to die for and these are apparently barley flakes and they really do taste like barley they're very yummy and if you don't if you can't be asked cooking barley and you want a quick barley substitute a barley flake really does the trick it's got a fantastic like mm, like Crunchy, not crunchy. It's got a bitey texture, which is delicious. Anyway, I'm gonna go and enjoy that. I think tonight for dinner, I'm gonna be doing the kids some very easy pizzas. And for myself, I'm gonna be doing kind of an Ethiopian feast 
with my fermented lentil wraps. So we're about to head out to go and get A, but I'm starting to feel a little bit peckish. So I'm gonna take a little nectarine with me. And Romy saw me get the nectarines and then she had to have a nectarine and now we're running a bit late. But anyhow, uh, we're snacking on nectarines. I've already eaten half of one. I think I might take two more with me en route. When we get back, I have a vision before we have dinner. I have a vision no, of, no. you can have some more nectarine, sweet pea. Um, I've got a vision of um, some kind of banana -y, some kind of thick banana milkshake made in the uh, blender. That's what I have in my mind. And that's hopefully what I'll be able to create. I'm thinking cauliflower style, cauliflower, chucky, banana is what I'm thinking. So, um, don't deny yourself sweet treats. If you fancy sweet treats, feel free to have them in the form of fruit and other fruit related things. Fruit is just perfect. Just remember when your body is craving sweet things, that's not bad. That's not you being a naughty person. That is a natural part of your instinct because you are meant to search fruit, <laughs> search out fruit and eat a lot of fruit. Okay, we're back and it is snack time. So I am getting the frozen bananas out. So I've got like two or three bananas in here. Now I'm going in with some frozen cauliflower. If you guys have not tried frozen cauliflower in something like this, it's a game changer. You can't even taste it the slightest, but it just bulks it out really nicely. So I'm going in with like, probably like half a cup of frozen cauliflower, maybe a splash more. And we're gonna make this one chocolatey, because I'm gonna chocolatey mood. So a few tablespoons of cocoa powder, some vanilla as always. Now that is what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it when a blender does that little swirl. Oh, and look how creamy that is. I should do a blender ice cream more often because the food processor is a pain in the butt. You try it, baby girl, what do you think? Is that good? Mm. That is very, very good. The ultimate soft Survey goodness. I know I've been doing a lot of ice cream recently and I apologize, but I'm addicted. Hold on, Ram Ram, hold on. I say this is the, oh my gosh, I've got it everywhere. This is one of the most indulgent, low calorie density treats that you could possibly get on the planet. Two or three bananas and cauliflower. That's basically what it is. And look what it's turned into and you get to eat the entire thing. So simple, so basic. I promise you it's so delicious if you have a nice ripe banana as well. I'm gonna go and share this with my babies, but I'll probably end up eating most of it because I'm a speedy ice cream eater and the, those two are pretty slow. What do you think of the ice cream, my love? And do you know what's in it? Banana, mm -hmm. cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, <laughs> frozen cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Can you taste the cauliflower? No. No? Is it a magic hidden vegetable? Yay! Okay, so I am going to be doing some stir fry for the babies and James and I are going to be having some lentil wraps and I realised I... There's not enough here, so I need to make a bit more. But I ran out of my doll that I had before, so I'm going to go in with this slightly different or a doll and wish for the best. Okay, so a staple meal for my babies when I want to get loads of veggies into them and I want them to really enjoy it is a stir fry. Um, so I've got loads of rice and in here I have got courgette grated, carrot grated. I've got some tiny little mushroom pieces and loads of little broccolis chopped up. Loads and loads of veggies. I'm going to saute this with some soy sauce and garlic and then I'm going to whack in the sticky rice in at the end and it's going to pad it out and they're barely even going to know this is here. And I'm going to do some tofu. Okay, James is back so it's going to get noisy in here but I'm going to be doing our... Ethiopian right. Back, so it's gonna get noisy, you cheeky son. Well, you are back and it is gonna get noisy. It's literally oh, a fact. It's fault of mine. I didn't say it was your fault, but it is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> cheeky son. So for our Ethiopian, I'm gonna be doing loads and loads of veggies, obviously. Um, now I don't have any cabbage, but I do have some green beans and I'm gonna do some carrots as well with a few potatoes chopped up in here. And Ethiopian food is just so, so, so simple. They keep it super basic and that is amazing for me. So basically the premise is you go in with onion, you go in with garlic and you have turmeric and salt for everything. And that's basically it. Obviously traditionally loads of oil as well. We're gonna skip that part. 
Okay, so my onion and garlic are nice and caramelized now, and I also threw in a thing of frozen ginger as well. Now I'm gonna separate this in between two pans. Now this one's gonna have all my veggies. So, so I chopped up three carrots, two little potatoes, and I'm gonna throw in a bunch of green beans as well. Heck, I'll just pour all of them in. Bit of salt. This is their stir fry. I've added all the rice and they absolutely <laughs> love this. It gets them so many good veggies in. <laughs> and about half a teaspoon of turmeric as well. Splash of water, we're gonna let this cook down. Okay, now for this next dish, I'm gonna be making mitten shiro. Now I don't have very much shiro powder in here, but I think it's just enough to get by. Um, so I've got my oniony mix and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in half a tin of chopped tomatoes. I'm going to let this cook down on its own for about five minutes while I mix this with water. Okay, so for this mitten shiro, what we need is, firstly, it's a combination of loads of good things. What is it? Oh my god, I can't see. It's got chickpea flour, red peppers, garlic, ginger, onion, oregano, salt, fenugreek, but it smells darn delicious. Okay, so we're going in. I'm going to assume this is about half a cup because that's how much we kind of need. So I've got half a cup of that. And I'm just gonna eyeball two cups. One cup, two cups. Okay, so just whisk this together nicely. And a nice little pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna add this in with my oniony, garlicky, tomatoey mix. Let it bubble away for about 10 minutes and then it should be good to go. Okay, so I'm currently making the next batch of wraps and the consistency is very different and it's a little bit squidgier and I'm not a massive fan. So it's interesting how lentils that seem very similar can have a very different outcome. These are by far my favorite. I need to buy some more of those lentils immediately. Mm. But you know what? It's still all right. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a couple of these lovely fermented babies. Um, I'm gonna be saving one for James. So I'm gonna have one down as my base and the other one rolled up on the side for dipping purposes like you would with an injera. Okay, there we go, there we go. I'm also just gonna warm up my leftover alicia from the other day as well and I'm hoping it's still gonna be good. Okay, so this is my incredible shiro. Honestly, the flavor is out of this world. So I'm gonna put my shiro in there. Loads and loads of veggies. Basically just cooked it until the potatoes are actually cooked. Okay, and here's my leftover alicia from the other day. I will show you how to make this another time. Oh my gosh, it's hot. Ah, uh, pull that on there. Okay, and there we go. This is my completely homemade from scratch Ethiopian. Okay, I know it's not really Ethiopian, but you could pretend it is an Ethiopian. Um, this is good enough for me. You can do it all at home without any fancy ingredients. Okay, fine, you need the shiro powder. I'm sure you can make that from scratch as well. I'll do that one day. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. We need to get the shiro involved here too. Mm. Because you've actually got the fermentedness. Oh my God. Okay, this tastes pretty legit, pretty legit. And I'm very excited about it. One day, I promise when I have more time, I will make the ultimate guide to weight loss vegan Ethiopian food. I will, I'll do that. So I'm absolutely stuffed, nicely satisfied. And as you can see, I prioritized eating my veggies first and I'm leaving my starchy stuff and I'm gonna have this tomorrow. Okay, I'm back again. So it's like 20 past eight and I'm sitting on the couch and I'm realizing I'm actually still hungry. I do like to try and honor my hunger fullness cues. And if my body is telling me that it's hungry, I will feed it no matter what time of the day it is. Yes, it's not ideal to eat super late at night. I like to finish my food by like, six or seven usually, but if I'm hungry, I am gonna eat. So therefore, I'm gonna eat my leftovers. However, I'm not just gonna eat it like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up on loads of low calorie density veggies first, with little dips of things obviously, and then I'm gonna move on to my more starchy stuff. That way hopefully the majority of what I'm eating is gonna be those lovely veggies. Basically doing 50-50 plate style, even though I'm going back for leftovers. And that is a really powerful thing to do when people say you can eat as much as you want, as many portions as you want. You can, um, but make sure every time you go back for seconds or thirds or however, however many portions you're going to have, 
add those veggies on there again and eat the 50-50 plate style. And that means starting with eating your veggies first as well. So anyway, let's load up on these veggies. I'm so glad that I made a ton of veggies. Oh yes. For such a long time, I really struggled with nighttime snacking. Not like I'm hungry and then I'm gonna eat, but more just like I'm feeling snacky, like I want to be eating something. I'm so glad that I was able to get over that and I now don't even think about food at night unless I'm genuinely hungry. And that, that was something that I struggled with for literally like a decade or so. So um, it's a really tricky thing. Let me know if you guys struggle with nighttime snacking as well. It's a right pain in the butt, isn't it? But there are a few strategies I use to try and get over that. The most powerful of which is brushing my teeth after I have dinner. Now I didn't do that this evening, um, not yet anyway, um, because like I said, I'm not really in the habit of doing much snacking. If you are in the habit of doing nighttime snacking that you don't want to be doing, um, then it's a really powerful tool. Brushing your teeth after dinner is basically like a signal to yourself to say, I'm not having any more food now, totally done. You're refreshing your mouth and you're basically saying, that's it. And if I fancied something, obviously it's a bit uncomfortable um, at the beginning, it can be a little bit uncomfortable to sit there wanting a snack, but not having a snack. But that really does help. But if I still wanted to eat something after that, just in a snacky way, what I would do is I'd opt for a nice warm cup of tea or something. Um, and I would sit there with a nice warm cup of tea and like sip it gently. And then that would be the thing that I could hold. And sometimes it's just like having something hand to mouth is really what we're craving actually. Or just sometimes I find just keeping your hands busy is something that I needed to do. So feel free to, I mean, take up knitting <laughs> or weaving or drawing or whatever it is that you might do with your hands to keep yourself busy. Um, um, I feel like it's super powerful. The other one of the other things I did in order to get out of nighttime snacking is to totally switch up my nighttime routine. So I would sit on the couch in the same spot and that's where I would do my snacking. And every time I sat down there ready to watch TV, I would think, oh, it's snack time. But actually what was really helpful for me was to go and do something else. So when I would sit on the couch and I'd think, oh yeah, it's snack time. I'd say, come on, Amy, get up, go and do something else. And I would walk around, um, maybe do some washing or tidy up some stuff or do some work or whatever, do something different. And that really helped snap me out of that thinking about the snacks all the time. Um, I mean, I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, but the other thing that really helped me is um, actually not going back into the kitchen. I feel like if I wander into the kitchen after I've had dinner, even though I'm not hungry, and I see food around me, I'm gonna eat it. However, I'm much less likely to eat that food if I don't even go in the kitchen, if I keep the kitchen door closed and it's not even on my mind. Whatever you see is the stuff that you kind of kind of think about, obviously. So anyway, those are a few strategies that have really helped me um, kick nighttime snacking. And boy, does it feel so nice to not have to worry about nighttime snacking anymore. And it's, that is a thing of the past. So anyway, that's how I know that this is true hunger. Mmm. Mm -hmm. oh. Reminder, if you're actually feeling hungry, please eat no matter what time of day it is. Um, if you're not feeling hungry, try and use those strategies to get out of nighttime snacking if you can. Mm. Depending on where you are at your journey, obviously. If you're used to snacking on Oreos and cookies and stuff, maybe first transition to snacking on incredible fruit. Buy yourself some cotton candy grapes or frozen mango or whatever your favorite fruits are and then have that instead. Um, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a bit all over the place and I apologise about that. But hopefully um, you've had some fun, interesting recipes thrown your way.